Today's garden painting is of the zinnia. I'm using my homemade Stay Wet palette, which is made from an old baking tray, two wet paper towels, and a piece of parchment paper on top. For my underpainting, I'm using titanium white acrylic paint over the white charcoal pencil sketch that I did of my zinnia flowers. The brush I'm using is a size 6 round brush for acrylics made by Artist Loft. I dip my brush into my jar of water and add a few drops of water to thin the white paint already on my palette just a bit to allow for a smooth flow of the paint from the brush onto the canvas. The canvas panel is 9 by 12 inches and the color looks black, but it's a combination of phthalo blue and crimson red, which makes a beautiful, rich, deep color. The colors on my palette for today's zinnias are crimson red, cadmium yellow, medium, phthalo blue, titanium white, and yellow ochre. For the first zinnia, I am mixing crimson red, titanium white, and a bit of phthalo blue to achieve a cool, almost magenta pink for the petals. The interior of the zinnia is painted with a mixture of medium yellow and yellow ochre. The tall center zinnia's petals are a warmer peachy pink, so I add some yellow to the pink that I have already created to create a warm peach for the petals. I was inspired by the pinks and oranges of the zinnias that are still glowing in my fall garden. Zinnias are so easy to grow and they thrive in my clay soil. I don't have a green thumb, but these flowers do well for me each year. They even seed themselves and I haven't had to plant them for three years since the first time that I grew them from seed in our new garden. For the orange zinnia, which I was really excited to paint this time of year, getting close to Halloween and Thanksgiving, I used about a 50-50 combination of cadmium yellow medium and crimson red. I mixed three different shades, a lighter shade, a medium shade, and a darker shade to give it that three-dimensionality. After the initial painting of the orange zinnia dried, I went back in and added some more highlights and some more of the medium tone as well. Uh, the first layer of paint was a bit thin, especially with dark background. I really wanted that glowing orange color to shine, so I added a few more layers. Each layer of the paint uh, makes it look a bit richer and it allows the color to really 
stand out and um, especially with the highlights and the shadows I wanted to make sure that you could really see them on the cinea. And here I am adding um, some almost pure yellow for highlights in some places and then in others it's more of a mixture between the cadmium yellow and the crimson. For the interior of all of the zinnias, I used a combination of the cadmium yellow, the titanium white, and the yellow ochre. One of the things I love about zinnias is that they attract pollinators all season long. My zinnias are usually covered in bees, butterflies, and the occasional hummingbird. I get so excited when I see a hummingbird. <laughs> They're often called the hardest working flower in the garden. They're low maintenance, heat and drought tolerant, which is really important in my neck of the woods. And they're just so colorful with green zinnias, red zinnias, pinks, yellows. There's a color palette for everyone from pastels to deep, dark, moody colors to bright, festive colors. And there are pinks in every shade. <laughs> Some zinnias are good, um, they're tall and good for the back of the garden or the back of a border, and some zinnias are shorter and great for the front of a border. You can also plant them in containers and they work really well as cut flowers too. They have a very long base life. Even though in my dry climate, I usually end up with powder, powdery mildew by the end of summer, the zinnias will still be covered in beautiful flowers, even if the leaves no longer look healthy. I just love the little buds of the zinnias, especially when they just begin to open, begin to bloom. And rather than a single flower, what we see is actually a cluster of minute flowers called disc and ray florets, which I looked up just for this video. <laughs> um, and so the big petals are the ray florets and the little teeny tiny, uh, they almost look like pollen, but they're teeny tiny flowers are the disc florets. The original green that I used to paint over the white underpainting for the leaves was just a little bit of phthalo blue but mostly cadmium yellow, which made that bright green. And what I'm doing now is going over that bright green underpainting with a mixture of the titanium white, phthalo blue, and cadmium yellow. But for this mixture, there is more white and blue than there is yellow, which gives it that cool green. I do want some of the warm yellow green to shine still. So I try not to cover it up completely. I try to let it come through a little bit in the areas where I do cover it up completely and I want to bring some of that warm glow back. I just wait until the painting has dried a little bit and then um, I can thin down some of 
the yellow with water, about a 50-50 ratio, and I can go over and it's almost like a glaze on top. Uh, you don't want to get it too thin. They say 70-30 uh, is the perfect ratio, but I haven't had an issue with 50-50. It is always easier to go from a white to a pale green than it is to go from a green to a pale green. So it is a smart idea if you're trying to get a very light version of a color to have your white and then add just a little bit of that color to the white. It's easier to go darker than it is to lighten something up. And here I'm mixing um, three different shades of pink. I'd like to do them right next to each other so I can tell if I need to go darker or lighter with them right next to each other or if I want to make it cooler, adding more blue or warmer, adding some yellow. For this particular zinnia, I am going for a cooler pink. So I've added some blue and some white to the crimson red and I'm trying to get a color that I'm not sure how to mix so I'm kind of going back and forth with the mixing of different colors but I'm pretty happy with the end result. I have quite a few dried zinnia plants in my garden right now that are releasing their seeds and to create the shadow and give it give it some depth, I used a mixture of blues and browns to the dried zinnia. After waiting just a short time for the initial paint to dry, I go back and added some highlights. Many times acrylic paint will dry a shade darker than it looks when it's wet and you initially put it on the canvas. So I like to wait for everything to dry and see what highlights I need to go back and add or what colors I might need to change just a little bit so that they're light and bright enough on the canvas. I found especially with the oranges that I needed to add a few more highlights. Hope that you get a chance to paint today or enjoy some time outdoors on your porch or in your garden. It's a rainy day for me and my parched garden is enjoying the long drink it's been waiting for. Thank you for spending this time with me. I hope that you have a wonderful